Hey everyone, it's Sam, your average Joe Lawnut. It's been a while since I made a video, but that's for obvious reasons. I mean, I have had snow on my lawn for the last couple of months. I still have some snow left, but as you can see, the sun is shining, the weather is getting better. So I think the snow will be gone within a few weeks and I can actually start my season. But for a lot of you, the season has already started. So I thought it would be a good time to share with you my three best tips for early spring lawn care. And I will also be sharing a bonus tip at the end that might end up up save you a lot of time if you're doing any leveling this season so make sure you stick around for that if you're doing any leveling that is so the first tip is just to be patient I mean like most of you I'm dying to get out and get started with the lawn but even though I have good temperatures like today today it's around 50 55 but during night it goes down to the low 30s or even mid 20s so you need to have steady temperatures before you can get started. Otherwise the soil will still be frozen and anything you put out won't be absorbed. It's just gonna pass through. And the soil needs to be around 50 or 55 to actually be able to absorb anything you put on it. So the first tip is to just be patient. It'll get going soon enough, trust me. <laughs> and the second tip is when you do start fertilizing, don't overdo it with nitrogen. So if you remember what the NPK on the bag stands for, N is for nitrogen and that's for upwards growth. And I mean, during spring when the temperatures hit around 60, 65 and keep steady, cool season lawns will start growing naturally, quite vigorously. So you don't need to push that much growth. You don't need that much nitrogen early on. And P stands for phosphorus, that's for downward growth and you don't really need much of that right now. I mean, the soil is freezing and before anything gets going and the roots are kind of warmed up and starting to come alive, phosphorus won't do that much for it anyways. And then we have the P, which stands for potassium. That's on a cellular level. So that's for the insides of the grass. And potassium is the one I would advise you to kind of focus on. If you're doing any fertilizing this early on, I would say potassium would be the best thing to add since you normally add potassium for stress tolerance. That's what it helps with. And imagine being grass and being dormant for a couple of months and you're just starting to wake up, stretching your legs. You need potassium to kind of handle that stress because dormancy is a kind of stress. So my tip would be don't push too much nitrogen early on. There's no need for that. Of course you need some nitrogen because without nitrogen the others don't work as well. So some nitrogen you do need. All right, so let me just quickly show you what kind of fertilizer I use for early spring. And this is called Florovit Hust. This one, Hust means fall. So I usually use this for a fall application, but I think it works great for early spring as well. So this contains 4.4% nitrogen. 5.2% phosphorus and 19% of potassium. So for early spring, this is usually what I focus on, the potassium. I want that to be a high number since this is about relieving stress from the plant that has been dormant for a couple of months. So that's why I would still use this one. Even though it's a fall fertilizer, I would still use this early spring, especially since it contains 6% iron. And if you have a lot of moss, I mean, moss starts growing at around 40 degrees, so a lot earlier than grass does. So if you have any moss, it's awesome to mix iron in your fertilizer or get a fertilizer that already has iron in it, like this one. Since I do have a lot of snow on the lawn, it's going to get wet and that's when moss thrives. So having a bit of iron is always helpful against moss. So if you can find something like this, it would be awesome. So I will try to find some suggestions. I think this one is only available in Sweden, but at least if I can find some suggestions of something that is similar, I'll put it in the description below so you can check it out. And my third tip is just to get the plan together. I mean, just think about it. What kind of lawn do you want this season? Or what kind of lawn are you aiming for? And kind of make a plan around that. Are you looking for a golf course lawn or are you just looking for a healthy thick lawn where your kids can play? So I think it's worth it to just give that a bit of thought to see what kind of lawn you're aiming for and what you need to do to achieve it. Because a lot of the times I get comments and I see a lot of comments on Facebook where homeowners just in the middle of the season throws out questions about 
how do I do with this lawn? How can I get a golf course lawn? And I mean, it's in the middle of the season, so it's too late to do anything about it right now. I mean, you can do stuff and get it going and perfect for maybe next year or the year after that. But I mean, for most people, it's too late to think about that stuff when you hit June, July, August. I mean, so I would say it's better to just get a plan together now and just think about it. What kind of lawn are you aiming for? I mean, it doesn't have to be a detailed plan exactly what you want to do and when you want to do it, but kind of go over it in your head and think about it. Do I need to scarify this year? What kind of fertilizer am I using? And if you're overseeding, what kind of seeds do you want to use? And also I would recommend you go out and kind of buy some of that stuff right now. Because we all have busy lives and as soon as you have a free weekend and you think, well, this would be a good day to kind of overseed or scarify or do anything. And then you look in the shed and you don't have any fertilizer, you don't have any seeds. So you have to kind of run around and try to find the kind of seed you want, the kind of fertilizer you need. So it's better to kind of store some of the stuff you already need. Um, I keep looking that way because my shed is that way. That's why I'm looking there. <laughs> so when I say store stuff, I'm looking at the shed. <laughs> Usually you store stuff in the shed. So keep some stuff in your sheds ready to go when you do have some spare time. You don't want to be running around buying stuff as soon as you get some free time to do stuff. And again, I'm not saying you should buy everything, but with the global supply chains being what they are, we have a war going on in Europe, so it's better to kind of get what you need right now, so it's all ready to go when you're ready. And trust me, I've done this several times. I had a free weekend and I think to myself, well, I'll do some overseeding and I don't have any seed. So I'll start running around the different stores and trying to find the seed I want because I don't want to throw just any type of seed on my lawn. And you always think you have more time than you really do. So it ends up being so stressful the entire weekend because I want to get it done. If I would have had everything ready to go in the shed, and again, I'm pointing that way. <laughs> you can't see the shed. <laughs> I'll point anyways. So if I would have had everything ready to go, I wouldn't have to stress that much. So that's all I'm saying. Just get a rough overall, not too detailed plan together. So you know kind of what you're going to do this season. And then stuff might happen. You might add to the plan. You might take away some stuff that you don't need to do. All right, so now for the bonus tip. If you're doing any leveling this season, and if you have snow and ice like I have on my lawn, I would suggest you to take a picture of it. Just as it's melting away, just taking a quick picture because you will see where the low spots are. It's so hard to see that during the season when the grass is growing, especially when you're like me, you don't mow that short. It's kind of hard to see where the low spots are. I mean, right now you can't see it when it's this much, but I would say in a day or two, if the weather keeps up, I will get spots during the day where it melts and during the night it will freeze over. So in the morning I can take a picture of that, then I can easily see where I still have ice and that tells me I have a low spot there. So if I want to do any spot leveling later this season, I can easily just check that picture and I don't have to go around looking for low spots. If you've seen my other videos, when I did my overseeding project I did some spot leveling and I used a picture from last winter to kind of identify where I had low spots. So that's my bonus tip for those of you that are going to do some leveling this season. Trust me, this will make it a lot easier to identify where you actually need to level so you don't have to level your entire lawn. And if you don't have any ice or snow, what can I tell you? Just move to Sweden. We have a lot of it. <laughs> All right, so that's it for today. I'm hoping the snow will go away as soon as possible so we can get the season started because I'm dying to start making videos again. It's so much fun to do videos, but I haven't been able to because there hasn't been much to talk about, as you can see. I don't want to make videos for just for the sake of making videos. I actually want to have something to talk about or add some value for you guys. But hopefully the season starts soon and I can start making videos again. And for those of you who actually stayed until the end, I would like to thank everyone who subscribed to the channel. I just hit 1K, which has been a goal of mine. And I'm super happy. I couldn't be more excited. So big thank you to everyone who subscribed. I really, really appreciate it. I know I say that a lot, but I really do. <laughs>
So a big thank you and hopefully I have some awesome videos for you coming up and I'll see you in the next one.